Today's episode is brought to you by Drum Roll, please. Blue Apron. That's how did you know? I didn't want to give you a drum roll. You don't deserve that. What is Blue Apron? Basically, they make cooking at home uh, affordable and simple and practical by sending you meals, specific ingredients that you need for not a lot of money. Not a lot. Not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. Here's how it works: For nine ninety nine per meal, they'll send you the right ingredients in the exact right proportions with simple recipe instructions right to your door. That way, you can order out. Without feeling lazy, because the ingredients come to you, yeah, and you cook them. Yeah, it's like you're a chef of yourself. <laughs> you you become a chef of yourself, and the meals are interesting and they're uh, very healthy. All the meals are 500 to 700 calories per serving, and they're delicious and they're unique. For example, let's say you order Blue Apron this week. Right. Next week, you will receive. Uh, pot pie style chicken with drop sage biscuits or for dinner I would have ordered patsio right or you can get a shrimp po boy with butter lettuce and apple salad or for dinner I might have ordered like uh, wet eggs in a, in a sweating styrofoam <laughs> container yeah in the diner. so uh, instead of ordering that shitty takeout why don't you treat yourself to some blue apron they, they deliver you ingredients and you cook it yourself you become a better chef in the, in the process. You really do become a chef of yourself. I can't stress that enough. I can't stress it enough that you become a chef of yourself. I actually, I used to pay for Blue Apron, so believe you me, I think it's a good product. And you know what? Let's make, let's sweeten the deal a little bit. Let's incentivize y'all. If you go to blueapron.com slash if I were you, you'll get your first two meals for free. That's right. Two free meals just by going to blueapron.com slash if I were you. Test it out. Try it out. It's a good gift for yourself or, or for, for others yeah. or for a couple or for a loved one. Valentine's Day is coming up. Valentine's Day is upon us. Oh, that's fun. Instead of going out to a, a or stressful is Valentine's dinner. Day pass? Uh, I think by the time this comes out, it's still upon us. No, it's passed. All right. Yeah. Cool. I'm sorry. You forgot Valentine's Day. There's one way to wake up for it. It's cooking your loved one a meal. Uh, so check them out. Just at, le- at the very least, go to their website. It supports us. It supports them. Blueapron.com slash if I were you. All right. Let's get this episode started. Very exciting one. Your mommy was on. I love my mother. She was great on this episode. She's she's insightful and she's uh she has she's wise. She's wise beyond her years. Yeah, and she made you, so how bad she could she be? Yeah. That was maybe the highlight of her life, yeah. making me. <laughs> uh all right, let's get started. Thank Things you, mommy. luckily got real. So I love enjoy. you, mommy. You're the best. Bye bye. Roger McGee. His name was yeah. Roger? <laughs> Pretty great. Bo- he sings like an angel. That's no, it was actually a, a lady named Grandmaster Kate. Ooh. Whoa. Laura, Very thoughts? Pretty. I thought it was really cool Excuse that me. it was... That's my mother. <laughs> oh, oh. So you don't yeah. call her Laura. You <laughs> call Amer- her mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know how that works. <laughs> You're going to refer to my mom as mom, You don't call Laura. every mom, mom. <laughs> yes, I do. I call your mom, mommy. <laughs> She called my E-ma. mom, mama. Yeah. Mama. So, so anybody who's a mom, you call mom. Yes. 
they've earned that right. The golden rule. <laughs> they went to mom's school. They have a child, then I am their child. <laughs> That's the rule. Uh, uh, I am so fine with you calling me Laura. Or I'm mom, there. right? Or mom. Either yeah. one. They both work. That's great. I feel like the song is very sweet, right up your alley. Yeah, I really liked it. Old Lang Syne. That was cool. And, I and how could she make it better? I thought it was, it was really pretty perfect. We all agree it was good. We all loved it. I, it was awesome. I think the nicest thing we can do <laughs> is, is help give her. her helpful tips. Yeah. Helpful. No song is perfect. Yeah. No song is perfect. Let's start with running time. 118. Great I, birthday. Terrible running time. Yeah. A little bit too long. <laughs> I think we do. Let's shave it under a minute. Let's trim the fat. No need. Absolutely. Mom? <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are so critical. Ah, oh, I thought it was wonderful. She I feel like calling job. us critical oh, is actually being a little critical of yourself. <laughs> I mean, we don't appreciate it. Uh, no, this is great. What, you've been on one episode before, right? Yes. Do you remember um, what number? Should I look at I, I actually don't remember. I want to say it was 30-something or 40-something. Wow, what if it's exactly 100? That'd be cool. I don't think it was, Do though. I think it was before earlier. Or after Pat? After, I believe. Really? I thought it was like 46. I might be completely making that up. This is entirely uninteresting, but I am going to look it up. Well, maybe um, we can edit it to make it seem like we did this research. Oh, like, 32. 32. See, I was wow. pretty... 103 episodes ago. Yeah, it wow. was a while. Crazy. It was a while. Uh, well, sorry it took you so long to come back. It's just that you weren't in California until That's now. That's it. Thank you so much for inviting me to your beautiful home. Thanks for being here, Mom. <laughs> Uh, now that you're moving to California soon, probably, right? You can be on the show a lot more. Oh, my God. I'm squatting in this, uh, in this house. I'm not leaving. I'm you're just... welcome. You can stay with me anytime. <laughs> All right. I love I'm you more here. than anything. I'm uh, sorry to well, the rest of my well, family, well. but yeah, I'm yeah. here. We don't care about the rest of our It's just Jake and Mommy putting her on out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mom. Just us two. <laughs> Forget and the Amir, rest of and them. Amir. Fine, yeah. just us, just me and you and Amir, and that's it. And that's it. And that's say all fuck we need. you, Hannah. <laughs> Repeat after me. <laughs> Ready? Forget you, Hannah, Rachel, Sarah, Liza, Micah. I I can't frame those words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who needs them though? Then you don't love me. <laughs> if, if you, you can't had to say that, if you had to rank the kids, who's number two? Oh my God! Well, we all know. I love Let's you. at least in in an objective way, if you were to rank them in height. Oh, and height. Yeah, who just says number two? Micah. And who's your what? Oh, number two is he's tall. number he's, two. He's I think he's tall. Tallest? Yeah, taller than well, Hannah. Yeah, because you, Micah. Yeah, he's taller than Hannah. And I think Hannah, Sarah. This is Rachel great. I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna edit my question. Be like, who do you love the most? And then it's just your thoughtful but quick response. Oh, Jake, Micah. Then. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. So oh, who do you love the most? God. All right, great. Now we have it. Um, so you know, you know how this show works. You're one of the family members that listens to it, correct? Yeah, or is that not I true do. Anymore? I do. Sometimes I have to turn it off. I'm going to be honest. If it gets like too, <laughs> like uncomfortable for me, what's your least favorite thing to hear us talk about? Um, oh, um, do I really have to say it? Like, yeah. this is tough. You don't have to say okay. Like the anything of words. involving anal anything. Oh, I will Jesus say, Christ. Sorry, you asked I wish you didn't question. come on for episode 134, all anal Monday. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> this is our all anal questions. <laughs> <laughs> and since every episode comes out on Monday, it's always all anal Monday. We never get to talk out Tuesday or women Wednesday. <laughs> It's always all anal Monday and, and bonus Thursday. <laughs> yeah, where we talk about more anal. <laughs> this is an anal podcast, actually. Now, this is an advice show. This is an advice podcast where Jake and I uh, receive emails from people who are confused at an impasse, an inroad in their life. Is it inroad? I don't think so, but that's okay. We'll just let it go. Uh, and they, um, need, they need our help. Uh, not not a crossroads. With, oh, that's what it is. A, a crossroads. crossroads. Yeah, right. yeah, an impasse. Yes. at a crossroads. An yeah. impasse at a crossroads, yeah. but not an inroad. Uh, and we do our best to offer our advice. And sometimes it's just us two, and sometimes we have you on the show. Sometimes we have my mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish we always had my mommy. <laughs> yeah, you cry a lot when she's not here. I cry when yeah. I miss my mom. <laughs> right, but it, ha- <laughs> it happens a lot. It goes. What are you doing on your phone? <laughs> yeah, I'm, you're I'm resting the, the microphone on your gut, talking. It that's is. not fair. You're true. like a fat adolescent who misses his mommy. 
but I, my well, because I think that inroad is actually a phrase. No, oh, making an no. inroad is it is a phrase, but it doesn't. It mean is, like but an I impasse. think it doesn't. I don't. an inroad is a sudden hostile incursion, an advance <sighs> or penetration. Up oh, and it. Let's fucking loaded a pop up, you little. <laughs> but in context, <laughs> advance it, or penetration, often I, at the expense of someone or something. Amir, usually I, used in plural. I stand corrected. No, you, you don't. You're right. Completely I, perfectly. We're right that I was wrong. I it, didn't it, use it. This is like when you accidentally make a shot in pool and it doesn't count. Or, I did mean impasse and crossroad. To make an inroad with someone is like a positive thing. But you ended no, up it's saying not. something kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. I mean, it's like when you play words with friends and you just like yeah. go out there and you just like stick something up and you know, you think, oh, it's not a word. And then it is. And right. it's like so exciting. Well, a lot of my intelligence is accidentally being smart. Accidentally smart. That could be the name of my autobiography. I think that's really good. You got to gotta hold on to that. That's like both humble and also very self-centered. Because I am saying that I'm smart, but I'm saying it's accidental. I think that's really pretty brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> you seriously, you have to write that down or trademark it or something. At the Someone's going to swipe it, that. Record it on this show. <laughs> uh, all right. We have some questions that we want to get to. We, we, we're seeking your advice. So you think you can... Motherly advice. Motherly yeah. advice. Yeah. Or, or, just, or just humanly advice. It's good because we... Then we, we should have had a human on the show. Because <laughs> my mom's a goddamn superhero. <laughs> I love you, bitch. <laughs> super I do. Are, I don't know why I'm humans. laughing. No, they're not. They're super humans. They're super what? Super humans. <laughs> super humans? They're not just regular humans. They're super humans. I didn't say, <laughs> super say heroes. regular humans. And sit back down. You're getting in my space. You're getting in my face, and I don't appreciate it. You're getting in your space, your face, because I want to put you in your place. Uh, I need a lady's name. A lady's name. Okay. Um, can I have a theme? Uh, oh. I can, I'll, I, I you can was, make it up. I was one of my favorite movies is Forrest Gump. Okay. I just love that movie. So can it be Jenny or Ginny? Nice <laughs> or nice. Jenny? Yeah. <laughs> it actually, actually can't. can't. Yeah, Sorry, I was Mom. gonna say no. So we, we get uh, to veto. veto on the Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It can't. It can't. It can't. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my dudes, I just went on a date with a guy who I met through some friends. I like him in that we have a lot in common and the conversation is good. And he hasn't sent me any dick pics, which is great. But he has no sex appeal. During the date, I tried to imagine kissing him at the end of the date, but it was a no-go. Should I go out with him a couple more times to see what happens? Or should I call it quits now? Do you think physical attraction can develop over time? Thank you. Love Jenny. So interesting. We were just talking about this. I, yeah, mother. we absolutely. Do you recall? Were. I do. Do you recall we what I had to say on the topic? I completely mother. do. <laughs> Holding her mother. Hand. Do I you remember what do. I say? Am I educated, mother? Um, you said in. Was I eloquent, mother? <laughs> you were quite eloquent, and you were saying that to Hurrah. you. Amir, I'd like <laughs> a copy of this podcast. <laughs> Everyone gets a. Co- what do you mean a copy? I'd like my own personal copy. <laughs> like how? My like... mother said I was eloquent. <laughs> no, she did not. <laughs> she you did. Said, uh, was I eloquent when I answered that question? That's right. I... Not in a general way. And yeah. when you answered that question, you were quite eloquent. You said that... Wouldn't you say that was in tune and in line with how I usually answer questions? Eloquently? Uh, sure. <laughs> you're you're leading leading eloquent, you're, elegant. <laughs> you're leading her. Absolutely. Let her answer the question. Don't just say, do you think this and this? And she says, yes or no. I think he's mm-hmm. not going to let me. We're at an inroad. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, you, um, uh, yeah. I think, Jake, what you said was that passion really mattered to you a lot. And sexual attraction was really hugely important to you. And we were talking about one of your siblings who will remain nameless, who was feeling that if she liked a person well enough, ooh, and I said the gender so that we narr- and sort of so narrowed it So we all know it it's Micah. <laughs> <laughs> you but, little bitch, dude. <laughs> you listening to this one? Mom's let, my let, girl. Let, 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 let your mom answer the question. Uh, um, I love okay. you so much. I'm sorry for interrupting. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I love you so you. much. Thank you bad. for running You're still interrupting. I know I'm yeah. done. I just I, want to tell oh, her I love her. She hasn't said that. He can't stop himself. Understandable. Um... I think what you, what your sibling said was that over time you could become attracted to someone, sort of like give a person a chance. And I kind of agreed with that. However, after listening to this, 
I think if this person was on a date and couldn't even imagine kissing, it's too cold. If it was, yeah, if it was that much of a flat line, I think it's really hard to get a spark from that. I mean, that's just yeah. My one thought. of the it's t- it's tough to go from absolute zero after date one to something. One of yeah. the things, one of the a stereotype between men and women that I think is somewhat true. I would I would that throw dudes my are hat. smarter. Yeah, that dudes are good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when a guy meets a girl, he instantly thinks hot or not. And when a girl meets a guy, that doesn't even like come into their purview for, until at least a little while longer, until they're like turned on by their personality. And they're like, oh, this guy's actually pretty cool. Let me think if he's attractive, too. And whereas with guys, it's just like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Would I, could I fuck her? Could I fuck her? You think I could fuck her? Just instantly. Would you say that's true or is it too narrow-minded and false? I think everybody's different. For instance, I meet a girl and I think, I'd fuck her. Instantly. There's no, would I? Yeah. <laughs> it's just imagining the scenario in which I would. Because uh-huh. I'll go from like, this girl's kind of attractive to like, I have three sips of whiskey and I'm imagining her in a wedding veil. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll marry her and spend the rest of my life with this this one. So, but so you're it, saying there are some girls that are like that and some guys that yeah, are like well, that. Well, my... Um, my position, which I guess I stated eloquently, I don't even really recall. It's not important. To me. I just like I guess I was, I guess I was really eloquent with this whole thing. I guess it was well thought out. And let's uh, hear what it is, though. Um, I think everybody is different. Everybody weights it differently. So for me personally, it means a lot to have physical attraction. That's the first thing I'm thinking about. Similar to your stereotype that guy, all guys are thinking about this. Yeah, and girls are less so. I think there are girls that... Well, there are exceptions to the rule, but I'd yeah. say by majority, most guys sure. think about that and most yeah, girls do but not. but even like within your stereotype of... Or within... I don't want to keep on calling it a stereotype. Within your generality. Generaliza- generalization. Yeah. Generalization. Like, yeah. Do guys do this? I think some guys do it more. There is definitely a spectrum yeah. where like this girl's attractive or this girl's unattractive, but even having that thought, you're not writing them off. There are right. some guys who'd be like, this girl's not attractive so i don't even want to listen to what they have to say moving on right and what we were saying about my sister or brother who is uh in this situation in this scenario it's like he or she doesn't work quite that same way and that's fine they can they can find themselves attracted to the personality over time and thus attractive to attracted to the person but i don't think this email would come from a guy I don't think a guy would go out on a girl like, this girl's I, yeah. un- un- totally depends. unattractive. Should I keep going out with her? It depends how desperate you are, though, too. Like, who knows how many dates this girl's been on that didn't work out, and she's finally gone out with a dude who's not a total piece of shit. Yeah. So, like, this girl's been on a date, dates with 100 dudes who all suck, and this guy doesn't suck, but he's not great. And she's like, it's like being on a house hunt for a year. And every single place you see is infested with cockroaches. It's dilapidated and falling down. You finally see a place that has a sturdy four walls and isn't infested with asbestos. But and you're like, do I move my stuff in here? But just what's because wrong it's with not it? falling down? Well, well, didn't she use as a some kind of parameter he hadn't sent her a dick pic? Yeah, that's a very which low. is like yeah, that's setting the bar, low bar super low, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, ew. but yeah, that's that's how bad men are. That if you don't send a dick pic, you're automa- automatically right. catapulted to the top. Well, that's so but that's is that percent. something like? Is, is are that... we doing a disservice to be like, hey, this guy didn't send you a dick pic? Go for it. Like we should. All girls should have a bar that's set way above dick pic or no dick pic. Right. I think not being able to imagine even kissing someone. That I mean, I don't know. That would be problematical. Well, how was your first date with dad? I was like, I don't know, 13. So, um, and he was what, 29? Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's he a cradle my robber. Teacher. <laughs> no, um, and now he just turned into a regular robber as he grew up. What are you talking He's about? He's a lawyer. He bleeds people dry. He's an ambulance chaser. <laughs> He's not. Oh my God, he is. He, yeah. He's, a, he's, he's an he's, estate and tax attorney. He, that's exactly right. He's a so very he's a hearse chaser. <laughs> <laughs> Death and taxes. That's what. All the certainties. My dad plays it safe. He is so full of integrity. <laughs> playing it safe Honey. is playing it boring. <laughs> well, I mean, can you even I call think... it playing anything? <laughs> Getting back to the question. <laughs> sure. 
Um, I actually. You're I not mean, worried about fending dad, are you? Because he's and, definitely not listening. Uh, you know. <laughs> he's never done anything to support me or you. Oh, <laughs> we're on our own, baby. <laughs> you and me, California, honey. Um, actually, I think the first time we kissed, it was I, I. I don't know. We were friends for such a long time, and I kind of didn't know what to expect, and the kiss went better than I expected. Oh, I have to say. That's pretty cool, a friendship kiss. Yeah. That turned into a, whoa. In, into a more passionate nice. kiss. But, but it's, it's, this doesn't really apply to this woman's situation. No, it doesn't. Went on a date. So there's it no doesn't. ambiguity about friends That's or right, friends. and I agree. I agree. He's The guy is in it for, he wants romance. He wants that, and I don't know. I would say, at the most, try one more date. And yeah, if, no uh, harm in a second date. Yeah, and if and if you don't find yourself attracted to him, but you think he's a nice guy, then you say and actually mean let's just be friends. But right. do you do you give the reason? I don't know if I'm attracted to you in that way. No, I think you can be definitive without giving a reason unless they ask for it. You just say, um, "I don't see this going anywhere," but it was really nice to meet you. Why we should be friends? What don't I have? <laughs> yeah, like it takes a special kind of person to say that. <laughs> Am I, I not good people, in the following ways? If Sexual? Someone, <laughs> if someone broke up with me, I would probably just be like, okay. Like, I don't oh, want to yeah. know why I was rejected. But then Other how are you going to get do. better? But you would I'm actually ask. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know my flaws enough that like if I got broken up with, I'd be like, oh, it was probably one of these three things. Yeah, three major things that are bad with that you. I, that I know of myself. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say they are, just right off the bat? Uh, that I'm uh, untrustworthy. Of course. I'm <laughs> aloof. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, I don't know really, I don't I don't really know what the third thing would Those be. Those are the big two. I guess like if somebody broke up with me it would be because they didn't trust me and they thought I would cheat on them or something. Yeah. Or I did cheat on them and they found out. <laughs> yeah. Or you just became disinterested. Yeah, I started pulling away and they could right. see that. Yeah. Distance. But Amir, you would actually ask someone if they said, "You know, I just don't think it's working out that's a good question uh i think i would be i would be more curious i i'm i'm pretty good at taking constructive criticism or just any criticism like i have i have years of doing internet comedy have left me with skin so thick that you can't really offend me too much and then when i've i've had like bad news delivered to me i'll be like okay i don't like break down i'm like okay that's interesting let me synthesize that ignore it because this bitch is probably wrong (laughs) I think that's a, it's sort of a blessing. You have like a high, high opinion of yourself sounds like almost a bad thing to say to somebody, but like you don't have a low sense of self-worth. I have a high right. self-esteem. Yeah. 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 It You're, seems like confidence. Yeah. Self-aware. And I think that's a good thing. So things don't erode it. Like yeah. just that external stuff. I, I definitely am not that way. I'm really sensitive. Like if someone says something even mildly critical, <laughs> I just, you know. Oh my God. What if they're all thinking that? What yeah, if they're right? I, right? Well, I assume they're right. And you twist even a compliment into how did that, what was, was that a backhanded compliment? I, I do that. I'm Your like, hair oh, looks nice. was that, oh, was that does sarcastic? that mean that my eyes look tired? <laughs> or does it usually yeah. look bad? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that. It's a very, it's a terrible thing. So I give you so much credit. That's awesome. I don't know how it happened. Maybe because um, I was... I th- years of internet comedy, maybe. I mean, that yeah. really... I, I, I think... Like, do you read the comments when people comment, like, on your videos and stuff? Sometimes. Not all of them. I have never looked at a comment. Oh, really? Never. I've looked at your comments. Oh, that's nice. Um, but then if it's a negative comment, I get really upset, and then I don't look at it anymore. Not well, that that happens Don't worry frequently. about me, mama. You have, to, you have to take the source, though. Like, if it, if it comes from our Reddit, it's like a, it's a smart person telling me an uh, interesting critique about a certain thing. If it comes from YouTube, that's the equivalent, equivalent of a seven-year-old dirty idiot who runs up to me on the street and yells, you're not funny, and then ran away. And I'm like, what the hell? And got hit by a car. Yeah. Whoa, what what was that? I wouldn't actually synthesize and take that information in. So you have to to understand the source. That's it. Yeah. Talk to my mom like, you have to understand. She doesn't have to do anything. (laughs) Oh, Jake. Holy shit. Say the word word and I'll pull the plug on his mic. (laughs) I don't know how to edit the podcast, but I'll figure it out. (laughs) <laughs> it's all in that little square. You're pointing at my shoe. <laughs> my square shoe. 
So you say give her one more chance? I one more think date? one more date and then Pull cut the it off. But it's not looking good to me. Yeah. That's just how I'm feeling. The prognosis is doubtful. Yeah. But not out. I would yeah. say tepidly one more date as well. Uh, I'll switch it up and say just move on. Find someone that does turn you on. What's better, going out with someone who's like this, great personality, unattractive, or a really attractive idiot? Um, interesting. I think it's a, she has to look into her heart and see, see the sum of her experiences and what she wants right now. Does, Does she, she want to have fun and not like be that serious with somebody? Then sexy idiot will be a, an enjoyable time. <laughs> or has she been with too many sexy idiots and they've led her astray and... She doesn't feel like she's emotionally connected with anybody. In now a she wants time. a smart uggo. Yeah. So it depends on what you want right now. Yeah. I mean, she was saying good things about his personality, but I think she sounds like she's looking for the whole package. She's looking for both. Yeah. Can you I mean, a lot of guys have the whole package. Yeah. Some guys do. I mean, I know I would rather go out with a guy who wasn't conventionally attractive. Dude, I know. Really like, you would rather go out with funny. anybody than Chad, <laughs> right? Who are you into? Like, we'll figure this out. <laughs> She's what? Oh She's my saying God. I would rather go out with who? <laughs> Dad anybody. is so perfect for me. He really is. I know. Yeah. I know you have a very low opinion of your dad, but I don't have an Sam opinion joke. of my dad. <laughs> I, I have, have no dad. father. <laughs> but if I did, no, I do. I do love my dad. He's a good man. He is. He's good He's to good. you. <laughs> he treat you well. Hey, you I love any blank, good man dude. who's good to my mother. <laughs> He provides. Does he not provide? He provides. He's a good man. He makes that money. And that's what we want. Security. <laughs> but he's also very nice, thoughtful. Yeah, and smart. And... He is rich. You're right. <laughs> oh, I was saying, aside from the money thing, he is a just good fun, income. To, a fun person to have around. He's really quirky. He lights, he lights up the room when he, he walks He in. absolutely right. does. No, that, he's like I think a that really helps interesting him, guy. He, it helps him sign clients and make money. And I think that's definitely a good valuable. <laughs> it's, it's Stop a valuable thinking aspect. about value as a monetary it, game. That's it. He's a very right. literal guy, yeah. Jake is. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm happy dad's rich. <laughs> what would you rather have, a dad or, let's say, a duffel bag shaped like your dad filled with cash? It's interesting because my, dad, <laughs> my dad is shaped question. like a duffel bag. <laughs> he is, he my is dad's a, a backpack. He's a bumpy <laughs> cylinder. <laughs> what did we say that your dad was once in an episode? He was a bat or like a, uh, what was it? Fuck. Is that a cactus or something? I don't know. Oh no, a pumpkin? <laughs> no, you were saying that my dad was a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. Your dad is a squash. He's a gourd. <laughs> oh man, I don't I don't think I heard that one. I gotta go find it. And no, you don't. I'm gonna be scolded after this podcast. My dad's a very handsome he is. strapping little lawyer man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of dads, we got a question about fathers. Oh, oh let's cool. hear it. Do you have a question uh name of a male? From okay, Forrest Gump. Can from Forrest Gump. One? Um uh, okay, how about Lieutenant Dan? Nice. <laughs> You got new legs. <laughs> Forrest was slow. He he was slow. Mm -hmm. He was a lovable idiot. Oh, yeah. God, a happy I... goofball. <laughs> Who played Forrest? What happened to that guy? Tom Hanks, yeah? Mm, I haven't heard about him since the 90s. <laughs> he was big in that movie. And that yeah. was all I ever he heard. He sort of <laughs> fell off the map. Yeah, like that a castaway. That was cast his rise away. to start. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Very witty. Wilson, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good Tom Hanks impression, right? Wilson! <laughs> That was well, really good. I'm sorry. <laughs> good. That was good. Thank you. I'm a boy of 19 in a sticky situation. One of my friends who is a girl talks and praises her father way too much. Her mother's an alcoholic, which is probably the reason she loves and admires her father too much, so much, and I respect that. But she talks about her father and his job all the fucking time. To this day, I do not know what her dad works with, but the things she has told me about him are... There is a nude painting of him in an art museum in New York. He danced ballet at an elite level. He's an excellent lawyer. He's been a taxi driver. He works with organizing charity organizations. He has stopped a civil war in China and was thanked by the president. He's been invited to the world's best restaurant twice. 
The list is long, but here's the real sitch. People in our class are beginning to get really annoyed at her for talking about her father all this time, and they don't really believe a single thing she says, and this generally affects her and my reputation. I have met her father, and does not believe, and I do not believe many of the stories she tells, but I feel like she needs to have a superhero dad because of an alcoholic piece of shit mom she has. But on the other hand, she doesn't know why people are shutting her out, and this makes her very sad. I could tell her to stop talking about her dad so much, but I'm afraid what this would do to her. Would it make her sad? What should I do? Thanks, love, Lieutenant Dan. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, this is a... Is it a female or, or no? The man, no, it the guy asking guy. the question. Yeah. Sorry, that's a really complicated. That's Jake, really can you even wrap your head around a child who respects and reveres his father so much? I yeah, it's funny. I have the opposite problem, <laughs> which is you can't stop talking about talking. my mom. <laughs> Didn't you say You're, your mom's been invited to the world's best restaurant twice? No, twice. My mom, my mom cooks the world best in the be- world's best restaurant, which is our our house. <laughs> You never made a meal I didn't love, Mom. <laughs> the okay. cold pasta, the leftover chicken, the burnt veggie burgers. The remember, burgers. we don't want to forget those. Mm-hmm. It's hard to feed eight kids. It Six is, kids, eight and people. I, I did I will, not do it well. I'll oh, be mama. completely. I will say, dinner at our house was always bland. It was bland. That's where you got yeah. your taste, and that's being you st- kind. You still have that taste. Yeah, I you like still have your to be all one to. color. Yeah. yeah. No, you are you are not a good cook. I no, so I'm not. I'm not. I love you so I much. I can't pretend to be. I'm no. a terrible cook. Everything you made was bad, and um, the best food we ever had was mediocre. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to take exception to it. It's the Constructive truth. criticism. No, it is yeah. not. You're not giving her any pieces of useful no, advice. Okay. Everything was delicious. Every you, Your pizza... I can make point, pizza cookies, and cookies and period. Oh yeah, your cookies are great. You're, Thank no, you. That's loaf? it. That's it. Are you kidding me? Your fucking meatloaf, <laughs> mom. <laughs> your meatloaf was insane. <laughs> Was, thank you, It Jake. was insane. No, don't don't but, say thank you. You are so kind, but you've got to understand. Like, I'm not kind. Have you ever had meatloaf at anyone, anyone else's house? Have I don't you need ever? meatloaf at anybody else's house. But it house, tastes mom. nothing like mine, and it's not because <laughs> yeah, mine yours was is good. the best. <laughs> no, mine's, mine's pretty. It was made with crackers, honey. <laughs> Instead of meat. You, yeah. know, you get that, <laughs> Ritz right? crackers. She chewed up what saltine are you talking about? and drooled uh, <laughs> to a pan. Oh, Amir, that's my secret. That wasn't oh. meat. Mom, what are you talking about? You were eating crackers. What was it, Mom? <laughs> You're Ritz eating crackers and ketchup. Bread. It was. Ritz, Ritz, Ritz crackers and what, Mom? Catch, ketchup, honey. Ketchup. That's it? Uh, it? What about the no. meat, Mom? There was meat in there <laughs> somehow. There was an egg. I saw you eating. There's an egg in there? I saw you eating just the bun of a hamburger yesterday and saying this meatloaf is, is delicious. delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no. hon. I, I loved our dinners. But, uh, what, this person has... <laughs> This person's got a problem. Yeah. I yeah, I mean that's that's actually a really complex problem. I feel really sorry for the guy and the. Why not be girl. as open as possible? Like if someone smells, tell them they smell. It hurts for a little while, but it, it's helpful in the long term. It, Isn't but also, that more? it kind of sounds like this guy is take is projecting his problem a little bit. Like, I can only assume the truth is what this person's written. Right, that's fair. But I I like to delve a little deeper. I know you like, you're all surface. Yeah, I'm cut and I'm sorry. dry. I, like I am to, black or, and white. I like to create a story. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I like to create an equation, a problem that can yeah. be solved with one simple bit of advice and it's tell the truth. Boom, next. We're on to the next one. I don't think the truth always works. Not like that. I think you got to get to the root of the problem, which is the maybe roof. he's starting to. The girl doesn't respect her mother. The girl, she might not respect her father, so she's creating this this figment of her imagination. Yeah, it doesn't sound real. I and mean, he couldn't possibly be this person. Yeah, I don't well, believe. Uh, there is some sort of psychological thing going on where she's uh, creating a mythical father that's so good that she doesn't have to address her faulty mom. But what I what, see what he's doing is he's shutting her down and being annoyed and like never getting, he's getting little pieces yeah. of information like the the bullet points of this is what I know of her father right now. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah. He should sit down with her and be like, civil war in China, huh? Tell me more. (laughs) I'd like to talk to your father about this. Why doesn't he just embrace this and find out everything there is to know about this girl's dad? It won't take you forever. It's like reading an autobiography, and then you'll be done. She'll feel like she expelled everything from her. It actually reminds me of Forrest Gump. 
It's like, oh, my dad played ping pong in the Olympics and also was a football player in Alabama. He was also in Vietnam. He also started right, he a, shrimp a shrimp restaurant. It. Yeah, that's long yeah, story you're short. Right. You fucked up on the name. This, should, this question should have no, been for I, I think it's pretty close. Forest. We might have to go with that next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, it's, if anything, it was a good name because this question came from somebody who knew Forrest. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, one Forgive thing me. that a curve that the letter took was that he met her father. I almost thought that it was going to be one of those things where she talked about this guy and oh, he and never materialized. Because he wasn't really there. Because he wasn't really there. Because I had friends in high school who had boyfriends and oh. then the boyfriends, they were always supposed to come down and, you know, meet them somewhere, but then they got sick or, oh, yeah. you know, it was always like, not When I was growing true. up, I had girlfriends in California, <laughs> for sure. What does that mean? <laughs> I lied about having girlfriends in California. <laughs> All of my friends did. <laughs> Like girls from Canada, California. Oh, that's an actual thing you did? Yeah, like in, during sleepovers, all the guys would just talk about their girlfriends they had from other states. Is that true? Yeah. Why? I mean, yeah. I don't know if everybody does that, but me and my friends did that. How old were you? Uh, 28. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you actually did have a girlfriend in California at the time. That's why. Uh, I must have been 12. <laughs> that's funny. 13. Lying about that. Oh, that is funny. I think it's just because we wanted to talk about... Uh, like relationships and yeah and sex and whatnot yeah yeah Yeah. etc etc and that that makes sense so what do you say to this lady i i think that he should be forthright i think that it's eroding the relationship to have um the guys start um lieutenant dan start getting to be you know annoyed by it it also sounds like she's um not got a great relationship with kids at school so, um, I mean, my feeling would be it's causing a lot of damage and the truth has to come out somehow yeah. or other. Just yeah. Playful. Um, like, it could be playful. Like, all right, let's talk about something else. The end. Just guide it. Just be, like, positive and guide <laughs> yeah, the conversation in another direction. Yeah, but that's, that's not getting a... to the root of the issue. That's yeah, but I feel like sweeping the weed to the left and right. I want to pull it out. <laughs> Shred it. Drink it. Shit it. Eat it. <laughs> pee it. Flush it down the toilet. It's yeah. out of here. So you, so it started out. You want to eat a weed, then you want to eat your shit. I was, I was there up to the pullet. Then it was like, what? Flush it out of here. But I mean, do you see this relationship going anywhere? Do you think this girl is going to be psychologically healthy enough to continue? Well, it sounds like as, they're just friends. I don't think they're boyfriend and girlfriend or anything. Oh, yeah. okay. They're All just right. a female friend. Okay, so yeah, I, as a kindness to her, then yeah, I would, I would be. Honest. Or you can leave her be, and then she'll just gradually get washed away, just mutter from away society. into a field, yeah. talking about her father, <laughs> and, 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 and he was actually on the Apollo <laughs> Eleven mission. She's like on a bus stop talking about her dad. Yeah, uh, and another thing that he did was he he had, he had a beehive and he grew honey for a long. He, my dad well, was a bee. He was know, actually. Uh, <laughs> He would buzz Your around. Dad and was a bee. My dad was a bee. Yeah, yeah. He had his own honey, and also yeah. my dad was a shah. And then, yeah, he was, but he I don't be the shah. My dad was a bee, a shah. He was a he he he, he, he was a shake. He, he, he was a shake. Yeah. I don't quite understand why nobody said anything up to now. Though it sounds like she's been kind of pathologically lying her way through this for a while, and yeah, no it's one's hard ever... for us to wrap our heads around it because, like, we can't imagine a. Uh, a decent father figure, me and you. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe your mom's dad was a decent father figure. Yeah, my da- well, my grandfather's he was he was uh, he was a good man. Is a good man. Nandana, how do you feel about him? <laughs> Let's get to the complex. <laughs> that that again is a very complex <laughs> complex issue. No, he 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 was a typical like nineteen sixties dad. They they didn't get too involved. Yeah. With us. Aloof Stern. dad, good grandfather. Yeah. I think all Yeah, guys, I think that's true. Well, I guess not everybody, but a lot. you just get sweet as you get old. Because you you're do. like, oh, you're, you're really die. vulnerable. Hard and exterior. Yeah. You're be dead soon. Yeah, like a, like a ripe, uh, unripe piece of fruit. You'll get mushy and soft by the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a really good analogy. So what's going to happen like to you? That. You were mushy and soft your whole life, baby. That, like, I, I've never harden? been. I, I don't think so. I think they say that you either get mushy and soft or you like shrivel uh-huh. and get bitter. And oh, I think fun. I'm just, I was mushy and soft to begin with, and I'll just continue mushy and soft. That's just 
the way I am. That's beautiful. Love you, baby. I love you too, baby. Let's take a break. Let's take a break real quick. We'll thank a few sponsors and then we'll come back and maybe answer one more question. Does that sound good? Very cool. Thank you again to MeUndies.com for sponsoring this episode. You've heard them on the show before. MeUndies.com sells comfortable and stylish underwear and outerwear for men and women. We're good salesmen on the show because we talk about how comfortable these clothes are. And depending on your disposable income, how affordable these clothes are. Free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. But we can't sell you anything, especially underwear, unless we first convince you to go to their website. In fact, that's all we can do. And that's all we get paid to do. Me Undies pays us to get you our listener to visit MeUndies.com. From there, it's mostly their website that gets you to actually purchase the clothes. So how can you help us? Well, it's easy. If you're at your computer now, Command T, that opens up a new tab, and type in www.MeUndies.com slash Amir or slash Jake and check them out yourself. They track that. Visiting their site with our specific URL will help our show. Will you end up buying underwear? Ideally, yes. And will that ideally result in you buying more and telling other people about it? Sure. But we can't ensure that. We can only get you to visit their website by speaking highly of their clothes, which we do. They are incredibly soft and comfortable and cool. And repeating that URL twice again. MeUndies.com slash Amir. MeUndies.com slash Jake. Thanks. All right, fine, one more time. MeUndies.com slash Amir. <clears throat> what else? Hey, Amir, do you like taxes? No. How do you like to never do them again? What are you... What's going on, man? TaxAct.com helps you do your taxes. <laughs> yeah. Because never doing them again is not an option. Yeah, this is, the, this is the easiest legal way to get around doing taxes. Uh, basically, TaxAct.com says, you know what? Doing taxes yourself is not that difficult. You can do it. With us, it's easy, it's fast, and it's free, and you don't have to pay someone else to do it for you. So it's affordable as fuck. Uh, the only person you have to pay when you do your taxes now is Uncle Sam. Thank you. You can save money and get your maximum refund guaranteed. No restrictions. You could do your own taxes. Start for free today at taxact.com slash you. That's Y-O-U. That's taxact.com slash you, as in you got this you can do it uh they guide you every step of the way you can start anywhere finish anytime you can do it on your computer your tablet your phone that's kind of cool you can do your taxes on your phone ridiculous the future is now and be like swipe it on tinder doing taxes that's right Beast Tax mode it's a company that acts differently because it follows a code of integrity simplicity and most of all value so if you value simplicity and integrity and you need to do your taxes we highly recommend i value integrity as you should I'm actually integrated myself. <laughs> Very much so. I'm, I'm highly on the integral part. So if you need to do your own taxes, everybody needs to do taxes. If you made money this year, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. You have to help. Your, your taxes go to everything. Education. Uh, public school. Yeah, education. Defense, I bet. A lot of it goes to the army. Yeah. You know, send a salami to your boys in the army. They no longer need salami. They just need cash now. they now. just need tax dollars for drones. Yeah. Can we talk about that for a second? <laughs> Not right now. We have to get back to the episode. Okay, let's do that. I love your ads. I have to tell you this. This is perfect for when we're back. Keep talking. I will do that. Yeah. This is I it. Really we're, back. we're back now. We're yeah, back. yeah, yeah. You love oh, our ads. I love the way you guys deliver ads. They're, it's so sincere. And... I mean, the thing is, because we don't have cable at home, and you know this, Jake, we don't watch regular television with ads. You miss the ads. I miss the ads. I do, in a weird way. But when I hear your ads, I I don't know. I'm just reminded of everything I love about advertising. The sincerity, the just this kind of like... Let's send this clip to whoever sponsored this episode. That's a good idea. And I think you guys have great delivery. Like... I would, at at one point, our dog passed away. I can't even bring myself to say the word die. Nellie, when Nellie died, (laughs) you um, Oh, no. What the fuck is this? This ambush, this gotcha journalism. I hated to tell you this way, honey, but. (laughs) I'm floored. (laughs) I'm floored of this. But there was, you were, there was, there was something that you were selling No one for. fucking called me. Uh, oh, Jake, I'm so sorry. They're just, no I ran out of anything. time. I'm sorry. It, it you didn't just, email my ass? You didn't text I don't my know. shit? What can I say? Are you? 
it's indefensible. Was there but, a service? Um, <laughs> yeah, very small cremation. Just the family? Just the immediate just family. Just everyone but you. Just the nuclear family. <laughs> you, I think you went to our last dog's death. Bob? Yeah? I was not there. Oh, that's right. You were, you you wouldn't go. You were the only one. Am I correct? I had to work that day. No, I think <laughs> you just couldn't bring yourself to it. Yeah, he was, it. Bob was euthanized and Jake, you were a sensitive that? soul. Did I know you then? No, this one I was in high school. Wait, yeah. you had a dog when I met you guys. Yes, that was Nelly. Oh, Nelly, Nelly died? Was, Nelly, yeah, yeah I didn't Nelly even know that. died. When did yeah. that happen? Nobody fucking um, talks about it. Nelly died on Christmas Day. This this Christmas? Yeah. You were home. Yeah. Yeah. So this happened recently. Yes, it happened recently. No, wait, it didn't happen on Christmas. <clears throat> it happened you on Christmas. Me about it. Oh, I, I did. I York. called you were in New York. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but it happened on Christmas morning at wow. ten o'clock. And um, they were preparing to euthanize her, and she actually just died on her own. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Which is, it's kind of a beautiful it's thing. Like save the needle. Watch yeah, it's this. like I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm cool. good. I'm going. And she just. But you had already away. given the dog away, right? Yes, to Gordon, who is the dog whisperer, the coolest man in the world. How did we start from ads and end up here? I don't don't know. know. Oh, the at you say. Our dog oh was, yeah, I wanted to buy. You had some bark like, box. Bark box. And I was like, I'm getting this. I'm totally getting this. And it was because of and you, you were it. very persuasive. Dad, Dad plays with the chew toys. <laughs> Dad was eating a milk bone when I walked into the door. Well, that's one of the things that people like about podcast ads is one, it's like, it's sort of like the old school TV approach where it's like, we're going to stop for a minute and have the actual people who are doing the show talk to you guys about toothpaste That's, or whatever yeah or meandies which is yeah. something i'd never heard of before but now i know what they are i think they're really cool i've washed several pairs of them yeah and it helps that we actually like uh you the majority them. of this stuff yeah sometimes we do yeah. have to lie it's casually. I, and but who I knows about never, which one they'll I, never know <laughs> i can never no you guys just sound so sincere that i actually would be shocked to find out that you were not being completely truthful we in do lie ads. sometimes i'm surprised <laughs> that's right uh, but the majority of the stuff we've been fortunate we've either used before or they send it to us and it's so great that we don't mind raving about it on our show it's true well that nature box I've eaten my share of that yeah nature box is great it's we awesome. have it at our house me undies is great everything we have right is now. mostly great yeah um, what else do we want to talk about um, did you have anything you wanted to mention or plug before? Oh, we go? I know. Yeah, I'll mention or plug something. That's what I'll do. I wrote a novel, and what? it's I did. <gasps> I wrote a novel, and what have you it... done with your life, Blumenfeld? <laughs> <laughs> let her let her finish. And Sorry. it's <laughs> and then yeah, I know it's going to be a long. No, list that's the of title the of the novel. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it's actually called Disappear Home. It's a young adult novel. Um, it's published Perfect, cause by Albert Witten. We have Albert a podcast Whitten. for lots of uh, young adults. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's like actually, I think it's one of those young adult novels like um, Fault in Our Stars or Hunger Games, even although not at all that same genre Less as hun dead kids. Hunger Games. No. <laughs> What's the age range for young when they say young um, adults? Is that like usually 13 to 17. Oh, and I would say that specific. that's pretty appropriate for wait, this one. Who's the one. publisher? I talked to over um, you, so I don't know. Albert read it. Whitman. It's Perfect. there in Chicago. And what's the name of the book again? Um, Disappear Home. And that actually is the title that they, um, my editor, gave the book. Um, my original title was Flower Children because it's about um, a hippie family back in 1970 who um, have to escape this really depraved commune so Whoa. there's yeah there's a little it's it's a little bit dark but um, that's why i like the title disappear home yeah it's it's, it's a more little ominous it is very ominous is nice. i mean they have to they have to get out of there um so uh, is it available are you still writing how does it um work? no it's actually it's available you can pre-order it so it's not available amazon and barnes it's not available. and Noble. it's available no, for and it will be it actually sorry will, i'm being such an asshole you, no, no, <laughs> i got into this mode. semantics you're completely right you're totally I actually, correct you know i pre-ordered it you do, thank you. You thank can you go on Amazon.com and pre-order. I pre-ordered the hard co hardcover copy. <gasps> Whoa! Thank yep, not you. Not even the ebook. Wow. And the, the Amazon has that rank. You see that sales rank? Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. take a lot to boost it up. To boost it up. So I, if we can if we can push the needle right here, if we can move some units, that'll be a great great yeah. help. That would so be so cool. So the thing so that help, cool. I think the thing that helps is writing a positive review. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I know that there Goodreads wrote a yeah, yeah. Re, someone wrote a re review, and I know it got I think out of 
five stars, it got four. Wow. Which I think for Goodreads is good. I mean, that sounds kind of like, okay, I got a B. No, I no, could have no. gotten a hundred. Four to five but is I think pretty much as good as it gets. Four, four to five There's, is. Five I mean, is as good as it gets. Well, five well, is like a masterpiece. You deserve a five, it. and I'd like to talk I mean, to that. Like, I think <laughs> My mother wrote Catcher in the Rye meets Lolita meets... <laughs> <laughs> meets yeah Scarface <laughs> maybe that's why she got a four the third movie she tried to cram in there uh Wait, I thought you were out here working on that book. Um, no, I'm working on my third novel. Actually, holy sheesh! So is this so, number two, Disappearing Home? Um, yeah, number two is Disappear Home. Number one, um, was it's it's called Airstream, but and that was that, not out yet. And that's not out yet. That's still in the queue. So your number two novel is going to come out first, right? So when does right. Disappear Home? Kind of like to kill out? a mockingbird, um, actually. Right, like the whole Ar- Harper Lee yeah, sequel. Yeah, the sequel is coming just, out second. Right. Exactly. So when does Disappear Home come? Um, March 15th. <gasps> that is soon. It's soon. It's like a month. And you can pre-order it now. You can and pre-order you can it on pre-order Amazon. It. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Barnes and Noble. Or they said the local, your local bookshop, you can go in and just ask for it there. Right. Well, I don't want to support right. that. Right. Amazon. <laughs> and then what was the other megacorp that's killing everyone? Barnes I also Noble, just want to mention, so I, read, <laughs> I read my mom's book on an airplane when I was on my way home for Christmas last year. And I hadn't cried since high school, I think. And I bawled my <gasps> eyes out. Oh, Jake. Full, like, full on, not even just like tears on my face. Bre- like the, oh my God. Oh, breathing from words. That is so yeah. sweet. Thank so intense. you. That's it like was really the, good. That is the nicest thing you've ever said. That's That so you sweet. made me cry? <laughs> <laughs> you made me so sad. <laughs> That's how bad the book was. I'm like, I don't know how to confront her when I land. And I started bawling. She didn't even ask me for notes, but I knew I had to give them. So disappear home. Order disappear it. Disappear home. Yeah. Uh, write a review if you if you think it's great. Yeah. And thanks for your support. And it has everybody. its own hashtag. Hashtag disappear home. Right. Hashtag Though disappear nothing, home. Like my mom was like, um, hashtags are good. They boost the... They boost the marketing. I was like, no. <laughs> it's like I didn't know how hashtags work. I'm, I'm just green light like, disappear home. Maybe you can have a TV show before we do. Oh, that's uh, a good idea. Uh, no, you guys, you guys are going somewhere. I'm telling you, there's a real shortage of fine, fine comedy. On do you think television. TBS is going to pick up our show? <laughs> yeah, they better. They better. Or you're going to keep tweeting. Oh my god, I yeah. am. They don't want that on their hands. <laughs> uh, can we answer one more question? We're running a long time, but I want to get to it because okay, cool. your, your advice is sage. Yeah. Do you have anything else Thanks. you want to promote before? Nah, that's about it. What about your I Twitter love... account? Or, your Tumblr. Um, Tumblr. Oh, um, yeah, I have a blog. It's lollyblog.tumblr.com. Yeah. And I write every day, and I love I love that kind of short format. Yeah. So come just, for the pictures of Jake and stay for the good writing. Yeah. And there are pictures of Jake. New and, ones, too. Yeah. Actually, last week. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of nude pics, that brings ooh, us to our last ooh, question. Ooh, we need another segue. guy. Another guy's name. Um, okay, we didn't use Forest last time, so let's do Forest. Run Forest. Go Forest. I mean, you, you already, already wrote, wrote Forrest. Forrest. Hey, Jake and Amir. So I'm in high school, and I'm the guy who makes films for my school's assemblies and stuff. <gasps> I was given the job of making a promo video for my school spirit week, and I had this dope idea involving a male teacher walking in slow-mo through the hallway. Anyway, when the video played at the assembly, everyone started laughing at one part of the video. As it turns out... There was a shot in the video that was completely zoomed in on my teacher's crotch as he was walking. Not only that, but apparently his bulging dick was clearly swaying in the shot. I hadn't noticed this, as it was supposed to be showing his hands moving. Everyone started making fun of me for it, and the teachers were fucking pissed at me for displaying the penis of one of the teachers. Anyway... The principal emailed me and asked me to edit that shot out of the video for the middle school assembly next week. I haven't replied, but I really don't think I should have to do it. The promo film is my vision, with or without the dick shot, and I don't think the school should be able to limit that vision. What do you guys think I should do? Thank you, (laughs) Forrest. I'm sorry to laugh. I'm I'm sure it was an earnest question. Um, it, uh, he he should edit it out. 
Yeah. You, you come from a school. You you worked in a school. I worked in a school. You are an artist, and you cannot compromise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's true. I did work in a school. I was a middle school and on a high school teacher. But it, it, it sounds like it was a promo. I mean, it's how how much um, of the artistry was in the. Dick, dick shot? shot. I would yeah. say sixty percent of the <laughs> artistry <laughs> was in the bulging dick. It, like, it went from being a mistake that he left a in mistake. there by accident to this is my vision. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was supposed to be of the hands. Yeah. Why don't you shift focus and yeah. show his hands swaying? I if- think yeah. You're not a. You're not. I mean, it's nice that you make the video, <laughs> but your art's not unimpeachable yet. You uh, haven't yeah, earned yeah. that right. Is is school uh, is high school a dictatorship? Um, whatever, a, whatever the principal says goes. A little bit, a little bit. Is there is, any I sense think. of checks and balances? Do the parents get a say? Um, I was in an independent school, you know, private school, and sometimes the parents did get a say, and it's that's their money. that's because it's their money, right. exactly. So it's a little bit different, I think, than public school. In the public but, school, it's like I I say this, and you have to either do it or leave. That's it. That's I a mean, dictatorship. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty much the way it is. Jake was in public school, and then um, he couldn't. He, you just wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't fall in he line. He tried to throw a and... coup. A fail, how many failed coups did you have? I had a coup. Yeah, I had a coup, <laughs> a, a mutiny, and a mutita. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, a cute knee. There was yeah, an uprising. That's that's <laughs> it. I mean, I, I think and several protests. <laughs> I did actually in sixth grade. I had a protest. You did. You did. Protested. What did you do? No uh, homework? Um, oh, this I didn't was go to, really good. I didn't go to class. I didn't go to school. And you got other people to stand outside with you and, and like, pick it. They it was really us. impressive. <laughs> you, got, was, you got a homosexual teacher fired. <laughs> <laughs> there was this thing that we did called Nature's Classroom, where all the sixth grade class would go to a camp for a week, and we would, like, take classes, play sports. It was like camp with your yeah, with, with your an class ecology that you were, kind of phones. and you protested yeah. that no they we were the first <laughs> they'd done it every single year all through like my kindergarten up through sixth right, grade every every class ahead it. like uh, at sixth grade went and we we're looking yeah. forward to it and that year they said there's not going to be any nature's classroom yeah so i was very upset and i got a bunch of my friends to not go to school to p- protest we had signs and we stayed out front for like an hour before the principal came out brought us in gave us all late slips and made us go to class <laughs> and a year after I left, we found out that that principal had been stealing money from the school. Oh, this, my God. That is completely true. And that's true. why they couldn't afford nature's classroom. I would not be surprised because they said there wasn't enough money in the school treasury and she had been siphoning funds. That's exactly true. Holy so, shit. Yeah. I was in the right. You were a whistleblower. <laughs> and that false sense of self-entitlement carries with you yeah. to this day. <laughs> that's what brought on the mutinies in high school. <laughs> yeah, the failed ones. <laughs> You're like, watch mutinies. this. Did she steal money? though and yeah. they said no and you're the like really throwing mm-hmm. never again <laughs> i thought every protest led to some sort of investigation. it's a real report. shame to sink your first three pointer yeah. <laughs> and then feel like you can play basketball and miss every other time you that's shoot. what they say about bad three pointers you want to make the, have them make their first one because then it's like you know they're going to miss the next seven. Oh, interesting that is interesting yeah i forgot about that that was a really that's a very good memory it Thanks. really was a lot of people um really respect a lot of parents really respected you for they still do yeah. so unfortunately kid you got to change the video yeah, yeah yeah just get and i mean the word bulging is also a little bit suspicious i mean that, i'm sure the teacher doesn't appreciate it or does he or does he <laughs> i was video gonna say already showed to all of your peers in the up like you really want to fight to leave it in for the middle school assembly <laughs> Just don't get in. Just edit it out. This is a good. This is a good origin story for a porn director. (laughs) (laughs) They wouldn't let me show my bulge. Uh, Cool. We're all in agreement there. Anything else you wanted to say before we? You had to leave us for another hundred and some odd episodes, maybe. Um my god i love you guys i love love you you guys and you guys deserve to have the best show on not only tbs but any every network oh my gosh a multi-network tv show you should be the head of the network i've said that for a long time (laughs) i'd actually stage a coup d'etat i know you're constantly trying to stage at any of the top networks you know actually jake that gives me an idea you got any cardboard (gasps) We can we to can Atlanta. Go out. <laughs> Seriously. 
Uh, Let's do it. I also don't have any cardboard, so I guess. <laughs> well, fuck, we're an shit I, out of less. An iPod Luck. or something. <laughs> Uh, if you have your own questions that you want us to tackle uh, or your own theme song submission, send those to if I were you show at gmail.com. If you have your own thumbnail art for the podcast, we're accepting those as well. We, we need you are any free help we can get at this point. Uh, the email address for everything is if I were you show at gmail.com. We start and close every episode with an original theme song. So this is close to 250 some odd theme songs. Uh, the opening one was by Grandmaster Kate and this last one was by somebody, somebody named Andrew Carey. Sounds fun, right, it guys? Does. It does. Thanks again. Thanks, Mama, Bye, for guys. On. Love you. Bye. You did great, Mama. Everybody, I don't know if you've heard, but your favorite website, Chive.com, now has words, and it's come in the form of our shiny new podcast right over at Podcast One. So join us. I'm John Rezik. Uh, this is Bob Phillip. Hi. Every Thursday for a mix of Chive culture, celebrity interviews, and offbeat current events. You never know who's going to drop by the studio, and you certainly never know what we're going to say to them. <laughs> so it's the Chive Podcast. It's total ear candy. There's no snark involved in this, and you can download it now at PodcastOne.com. That's Podcast One. One dot com.